Welcome back party people. We are back in the Lightworks video editor and today I'm going to give you five tips that helped me which I think will help you improve your user experience with Lightworks. <laughs> Before we get started, I'm going to take my mug off the screen because I know it can be distracting. Let's get started with tip number one. Tip number one may seem very rudimentary, but back when I first started making videos, there was not a lot of information, and most of the videos that were on the forums or on YouTube all were recorded in a certain project space format that didn't look anything like the format that I was using. And Lightworks and the menus and the selections were very different. So one of the things I'm going to show you first is how to create your project space so that it is more flexible. First thing we want to do is after we start our Lightworks application, you're going to get a menu in the top right of the screen that says system settings. We want to go down to our project layout here. And in this project layout, there are two options and the Default option is fixed, and if you start a project in the fixed layout, you're going to get something that looks like this. So the uh, windows are all tiled for you, and they're kind of in this fixed layout, which is not a bad layout, but the, the menus and selections are different than a lot of the tutorials that you will see in videos. But in order to make your project space look more like the tutorials that you're trying to follow, you need to actually change that project space to flexible layout. We'll go back up to system settings and back down to our project layout here. And instead of fixed, we're gonna select flexible. And that is gonna give us a whole different user experience now. We can actually drag and drop and move our uh, sequence editors around. And with more important files, we have things that we can and as we bring up our tools, we can tile those around the screen as we want those. And that will give you a user space that's probably going to be more flexible for your type, for your style of video editing. And try both, see which one works for you. All right, so let's move to tip number two. Tip number two has to do with importing your media into your project space. And if you're a video editor, you're usually working with various types of media and they may be on various shared drives or various file servers uh, or other servers, cloud servers in your network. The default tools for importing media in Lightworks, it's somewhat flexible, but the search functions, they're, 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 they're a bit clunky and uh, they don't give you the flexibility to do what you could do with your uh, browser or file browser or file explorer that comes with your operating system. So typically you would go through and try to find this and when these are on shared drives, it can be more tedious to find the files that you want to import. I tend to actually just grab my explorer window uh, in my operating system here and uh, might have some pre-production videos stored in a folder or two here. And usually what I do is I'll just grab those and drag them, create a bin for them. And grab those and drag them into bin there. And now I have videos that I've dragged in there. And I can use the all of the available options I have in my operating system file explorer to find all of the files that I need. I can sort by size, by type, by name, multiple different columns here. I can add a lot of other things that, uh, that you wouldn't necessarily see within the file import process. Now, usually I find if you're working on local drives, uh, the included file import or media import process Works fairly well, but when you start working on shared drives, the information uh, usually is not as categorized, and uh, you've got larger amount of media files that you're working it with. But being able to find the media and sort and filter the media uh, in your file browser or file explorer, or whatever for your operating system, tends to be less tedious. 
That's tip number two. Let's move to tip number three. So tip number three has to do with lookup tables, sometimes referred to shortly as a LUT, L-U-T, short for lookup table. A lookup table is basically a way to create a template from a color grading process. So if you've been through and actually color graded a video to a certain style, then you can save that color grading process as a template then apply that template to other videos. So one of the things that I've been playing around with a lot lately is actually shooting in a flat color profile on the GoPro. And the GoPro is an action camera. It's not a high-end camera for shooting uh, film production. It's basically uh, good for capturing large you know, views and uh, in action, whether it be underwater or wherever it may be. I've moved to shooting in a flat color profile and then I bring my media into Lightworks and actually color grade and color correct it within Lightworks to give the look and feel of the colors that I would like the video to have. So let me show you real quick what the typical process is of applying a LUT to a video. You can see here I have a very flat uh, color uh, clip here. Typically what you could do, I'm just going to apply it to a section here. So I'm going to mark in here and I'm just going to pull this over and then mark out. I go down to effects and I'm going to go to color and select 3D lookup table. And I'm just going to choose one of the lookup tables that he, I have stored here. And one of the lookup tables I have is an attempt to actually uh, move the GoPro color space into a somewhat of the 709 uh, standard color space. Bring this down to around 40% here. And uh, that would give me a start on where to color from there. If we move this down to zero, you can tell there was a big difference there between flat color profile and then applying 40% of this particular lookup table. That's how you apply a lookup table using the effects feature. What I'll do now is remove that. Uh, but what I like to do when I first import my media is instead of going through and trying to uh, go and create an effect that may kind of crowd up my sequence, up here in the top left corner under project, and we move over to the video tab. If we go down to the very bottom of the list here, you can see viewing LUT. And we're going to choose that same viewing LUT just applied in the user effect. And uh, you can actually view with that LUT. So you can see it's enabled here. And that gives me a good idea about if this particular LUT is a good starting point. And you don't get the uh, controls of whether to drag this over. Don't get the controls of what percentage to actually view that from, but it will give me a good idea if I can control the color enough to uh, give me a starting point to further color grade and uh, color correct. Uh, you can just disable it here and enable it. And that's a quick way to give you a view of a lookup table without applying a user effect. So that can be very efficient when you're working with uh, different sequences and different lookup tables and you're trying to decide which ones you think will actually work the best for your particular video. I like the way they have the preview here. Um, when you're looking through these tables, you can see what you're gonna get when you apply it. And that is a really nice feature that will um, just save that time and effort when you are editing your video. So. That is how you apply a viewing LUT if you choose to uh, use lookup tables in your video editing process. Let's move to tip number four. Tip number four has to do with proxy files. So basically proxies give you a method of editing video in a lower resolution and that helps out greatly with the system resources and gives you a much smoother, less jittery feel to the video and the editing and playback process within Lightworks. So I'll give you an example here of a few clips here that are 1080p 60 frames per second. I'm just going to create a sequence from these clips 
go to make sequence from selection and uh, so now we have our sequence here all right so there are our three clips in our sequence editor and here is our sequence viewer up here in the top right this particular window here and uh, what you can see here is that as you drag the playhead across the video it's a very resource intensive process because of the amount of information that is being processed there and uh, that creates a very uh, laggy experience when you're trying to edit video uh, especially frame by frame so uh, and you can see that when you start to work with higher resolutions like 2160p it can get even more intensive so the idea of proxies is to allow you to link a lower resolution version of those files to edit here but when you export it's actually exporting the high res version the first thing i usually do in my workflow is create proxies after before you create your proxies you want to make sure you're telling lightworks what resolution and uh, what uh, quality proxies that you want created so first we'll go up to our project menu here and go over to media and over to proxies and we're going to select a compression here we're going to stick with h264 you can see here you have some options right so i'm doing 360 here which is a fairly low resolution and i'm also doing a low quality so the bit rate's going to be low on that but that's going to give me the best experience of moving through this timeline when I'm editing and I don't necessarily need to see all of the details while I'm editing of course you can pick a larger resolution here if you like but I tend to keep a small window there and with that resolution it gives me just enough to see what's going on so that my editing is faster uh, which gives me a better user experience so now that when we create our media proxies it's going to create these copies here in low resolution and that's what we're going to be editing here on our timeline in our workflow after we import our media we're going to create a proxy of that media and for the sake of shortness here i'm only going to create a proxy for this first clip here i'm going to right click on that clip go down to media move over to make proxy but it does take some time depending on the performance of your system and so that's something in the workflow I do right away. As soon as I import my media files, I go ahead and create those proxies and let those run. Sometimes they can take hours. So our proxy has completed. I'm going to create a sequence from this particular selection here. We make sequence. Since we went to our project window and clicked on playback media quality lowest available, you can see how smooth we can work and move through. This particular clip with the playhead right and uh, much lower quality version of that video you can tell here but it does give you the ability to move through and edit video really quickly using the playhead so now if we wanted to contrast that compare and contrast that let's go back and in our video output here we're going to put highest available and we're going to move back to our playhead here you can see we have a much higher resolution video clip now but also much more laggy and very very choppy and then this performance is you know based on your system too the more power your system has you'll probably perform a little bit better but especially for my small system that i'm editing on here uh, it works much better if i use the proxy click lowest available and you can see immediately the video turns to a low version of that and it's much better experience moving the playhead through the clips here so if we go back to our project space here and we find a clip we created our proxy for if we go back down to our media menu so we can no longer make a proxy because we've already made the proxy we can delete the proxy right and then if something happened maybe we can remake it again all right so if we right click and select media and reveal proxies 
then we will get a file system location of the proxy. So you can see here, see users, public documents, lightworks, media, material, and you can see proxies that it has actually created. That's the tip on using proxies. That'll give you a much smoother user experience when editing your video. All right, let's move to tip number five. Tip number five has to do with 24 frames per second video and creating smooth slow motion in 24 frames per second. I'll give you two examples here. I have a have the same clip. One is in 24 frames per second, and the other is in 60 frames per second. So when I go out and film in 24 frames per second, if I want to create smooth slow motion, then I have to flip my camera settings over to start recording at 60 frames per second. That way I can reduce the speed and it will reduce natively down to 24 frames per second. I'll show you the math in just a second. Just bear with me and will be much less jittery than trying to do a slow motion on something where you already have a limited amount of frames anyway, like 24 frames per second. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. I'm going to drag the 24 frames per second clip down to our sequence editor here. All right, so here's our original sequence. And uh, let's say we want to slow that down. I'm going to right click here, click speed. And let's say we want 25% quarter of speed. And uh, let's go here and click playback. You can tell here in this fire how jittery this particular video is. That's because of the amount of frames that is natively within this video clip to begin with. And we've taken a quarter of those frames. So you're going to get a lot of space in between those frames. And it's going to appear to be jittery to the human eye. The way we get around that is to film our slow-mo sequences in 60 frames per second. And when we pull that 60 frames per second down to our 24 frames sequence editor, and go something like 40% on it, then we can magically get our 60 frames per second down natively to 24 frames per second with that slow, very fluid slow motion. I'll show you the math behind this. Let me bring up a calculator real quick. All right, real quick. So if we have a 60 frames per second video and we slow it down by 40%, multiply that by 0.4, Guess what? We get 24 frames per second. So if we film at 60 frames per second and that's going to natively play at 24 frames per second, then we should get a very smooth playback. So let's test this real quick. And so I'm going to remove our native 24 frames per second clip here. And I'm going to go back and add our 60 frames per our 60 frames version. Throw that in there real quick. All right, so just as we were before, we have our 24 frames per second uh, timeline here. And if we play this video natively, it's going to look fine, right? Because the software knows how to play that 60 frames within a 24 frames timeline. But if we go back down here and now reduce the speed of this video, right clicking, selecting speed, and we're going to reduce that by 40%. Remember our calculation. That 40% is going to bring us down to a 24 frames per second. You apply that and play this back, and you can see now that we have a very smooth slow motion of our fire. So the tip here is really you got to remember when you're recording out in the field, if you're in, if your video project is 24 frames per second and you want that smooth slow motion. You're going to flip your camera settings over to 60 frames per second. So when you reduce the speed down to 40%, you're going to be on that native 24 frames per second playback. It's going to look like a smooth slow motion. All right, that's going to do it for this video. I hope everybody enjoyed the content and I hope everyone enjoyed these five tips to help improve your Lightworks video editing experience. And until next time, skill up and ride, van up and go, and just remember everybody needs a plan B. Cha-cha for now.